Hello, good evening and welcome to Out and About in Ireland on irishtv.ie and what a special, special programme we have in store for you this evening. I hope you can stay with us for the next hour. This week we're coming to you from the heart of Manchester and we'll be catching up with the Irish community right across this great city. So many people to meet, some wonderful features and as always some magical music as well. A little bit later on we'll have a special feature from the Mayo Manchester Gala Dinner which takes place this weekend. So stay with us, so much coming up over the next hour. As we always say, all you have to do is sit back and relax as we take you out and about in Manchester. Between Tumbledon and Moor. And uh, it was 
like a lot of the people at that time work wasn't very principal, so we had to move. So I came over here in '59. Myself and another lad called Tommy Tierney. And uh, we took it from there, you know. And, uh, then I met, I was served in the to class in before I come, two and a half years, and I took it up here, then through my dad. And finished it off here. And uh, then I met my wife, my sweetheart, and fell in love. And, uh, Got married in 1964, bought a first house for £2,750. Can you believe that? Uh, when you tell them today like that you bought a house for that price, I find it hard to believe I've bought it myself, you know. But that's how it was, like, and life has been good to me. With getting a lot of young Irish who are coming in now for help, um, like years ago, they're now very educated, the young Irish that are coming over, whereas, like, in my mum and dad's, like, day, they maybe weren't that, you know, sophisticated as they are now, but still, they're arriving in a city where they know nobody, and, you know, it's very lonely when you're coming from somewhere, I mean, I'm, like, Boxing, you imagine coming from Boxing to a big town like Manchester and knowing nobody, it's, like, awful, you know, it really is, so... I, um, you know, at least we can just tell them, you know, where there's a GAA club or, you know, where the Irish Centre is, anything, just to kind of kick them up with people from home. Since the last time you were here, Piers, unfortunately, you know, we have lost several members, um, you know, and that's, that's a very much a downside. One of the ladies that spoke to you, unfortunately, she has passed away since, um, of her friends. We, they were chatting about, they wanted me to do a trip to Ireland last year, and, you know, unfortunately, it wasn't the right time, but, you know, we have since planned the trip to Ireland, and, but unfortunately, our, our Lady Maisie isn't with us anymore. We are going to the Park Hotel in Colchimar on the 14th of May. Uh, we're staying for a week. We're going to Ackle Island on the Wednesday the 15th. We are arranging a meet we've arranged a meet-up with St Coleman's from Ackle. Uh, there will be a tea dance arranged with the over 50s group in Ackle and our over 50s group from Manchester, which we are very much looking forward to. And on the Thursday the 16th we're going to see Pat Lavelle at Not Shrine. So, you know, all aspects of people's welfare are taken care of, the spiritual as well as the social. And talk to me about the number of that are travelling and the age profile. I think, the, the, you know, the average age is well over 70. Uh, we are hoping to have 70 people on the trip with us. Um, you know, there's quite a few extremely lively ladies that are over 80 and they are absolutely dying to go. They can't wait. Michael Rick came over here earlier this year as well and asked that we would bring people back for the year of the gathering. So that's what was behind the idea of the trip this year. So Michael, we are responding to we hope to see you over mail. Well, Minister Ring, I guarantee you, will come and meet all those lovely ladies. And let me tell you, he will probably kiss all of them as well. Oh, well, mate. Good luck with that one. It's, in, it's uh, indelible in the city of Manchester, the culture of Manchester, the Irish com uh, uh, contribution. Uh, Manchester wouldn't be Manchester without the contribution of the immigrant population. Very appropriate for this time of the year. So, uh, 
that's my, my song for tonight. In the dawn, a ship was anchored on a bright St. Patrick's Day. On the key, a lass was sighing for her love for going away. In her hand, she held an emblem. Its small green leaves were three. Her parting words were, darling, look at these and think of me. Freely shamrock I adore thee, your three leaves I long to see. When there's bright days in Ireland, I'll come home and marry Now, no matter where the Irish diaspora head to be it here in Manchester or in London, or in America, in New York, Boston or Chicago, or recently to Canada or Sydney and Australia, they never, never forget their native county roots. And here tonight at the Lancashire County Cricket Grounds, right across from Old Trafford, well, the Mayo natives are out in force for their annual dinner. Marcella Wilkinson is the president of the Mayo Manchester Association. She joins me now. Marcella, first off, well done. It's a fantastic achievement to get out over 300 people. Well, thank you very much, Pierce. You know, um, we look forward to this every year. It's the 33rd annual dinner of the Mayo Association in Manchester. And as you can see tonight, the Mayos are out in full force. What does your own heritage mean to you, Marcella? Well, it means everything, really. Um, I'm living in Manchester now um, since 1970, and uh, anything that's Irish just suits me, whether it's for Mayo or any county in Ireland. Well, how strong is the Mayo community today in Manchester? I would say um, we have more of an elderly uh, Mayo community now than we used to have than when I came over here. My age group, of course, kept the clubs going and running. Um, you can see for yourself if you went around to the Irish clubs that the community is getting elderly. And we are trying to encourage younger people to come in. There are a lot of second generation Irish people who are very willing to help. And although a lot of them won't make the commitment like we did, like our age group did, we came over here. But even so, um, you know, they are inclined to help out as well. The Mayo Association Award um, for this year is going to be to Joe Flynn. Now, Joe is from the Irish Education Group here in Manchester. And quite frankly, he has kept the Irish Education Group afloat for the last, I suppose, 30 odd years. A bit like the Mayo Association in a way, when we established the Mayo Association, the Irish Education Group also established around the same time. Uh, Marcella Wilkinson, the president of the Mayo Association here in Manchester, and Marcella will be the first to say that it's a big team effort. We're going to meet some other people here, so many people from Mayo here tonight. I'm privileged to be here tonight at this uh, wonderful uh, Manchester Mayo Association, and indeed I will always say that Mayo as the third largest county in Ireland, and indeed happiness to all concerns here in Manchester, to Marcella and her team, um, it's not always easy to keep the flag flying, but there's no doubt that wherever you go, uh, Mayo, I believe, has probably the greatest number of associations worldwide, and certainly Manchester is no exception. I'm uh, originally from uh, Ballina in Mayo, so uh, the Mayo Association is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I was one of the victims of the mass exodus of the 50s, uh, when my parents decided that they would um, uh, come to England. So we actually came as a family and uh, I consider myself to be one of the most fortunate of immigrants in the sense that um, after I left college and started to work, uh, I worked for the tourist board, I became totally immersed in an Irish environment. So I never really felt uh, you know, the, 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 the pain of emigration as it were and made lots of friends that I would not otherwise have made if I hadn't come to live in Manchester or Lancashire. I come from Common County, 
Romeo and uh, I first came to England in 1975 and I worked as a priest in uh, Manchester and um, I've always had Irish communities in every parish that I've been in and I've been attached to the Mayo Association for about 30 years and their chaplain so it's a spiritual link and connection with the officers and uh, with the people in the association We're involved sometimes in charity efforts and above all being a, a spiritual effect to people. Well, my family come from Lahadon. I came to live here when I was nine. Uh, so it's my father's side that is Lahadon. My mother's side is from Glenfarren in Leitrim. So please don't tell anyone here tonight. Well, Manchester traditionally has a very large uh, input from Mayo, both permanent and temporary. People have floated back and forth. Uh, and people come on their holidays here from Mayo to Manchester and to Leverdurum in particular. So there's a great association. Maybe for people from Dublin they went further afield, maybe they went to London. When the Mayo people got as far as Manchester at least, that was far enough for them. And they do enjoy getting together, you know, throughout the year and having events of different sorts. Uh, this is the biggest event any of the Irish associations in Manchester have uh, as an annual dinner dance. Um, but there's probably about 15 or 16 associations in the city from different counties. So uh, you could spend your whole life just going week by week to a different county's dinner dance if you wanted. Manchester has a reputation for being an Irish city, and there's a lot of Irish people, a lot of male people here, and a few are Scotland people, but we won't go there. But based mainly from the west of Ireland. Galway, Mayo, Roscommon. That's the majority of people in Manchester. Um, and they've done very well. They came, as most people know, during the 40s to rebuild Manchester after the Blitz and stayed and liked it. Like my mum and dad, who worked in a few places in Britain. They ended up in Manchester, found it so friendly and so, found so many Irish people themselves that they never went home. They stayed here. But by the 80s, we'd found that an awful lot of the children of these immigrants who had, like myself, Manchester accents, Irish names, and when you'd ask them, where are you from? And they'd say, oh, I'm, I'm British. And they'd say, with a name like yours, and you're British, where's your mum and dad from? Oh, they're from Mayo and they're from Galway. And so I said, well, in a way, you're Irish as well, I suppose I am. But they would never admit it straight out. When we looked into it, it because they used to say to us, well, if I say I'm Irish, people start having a joke with me. Even the Pakistani kids, who could speak little English, knew Irish jokes. And it was having a big impact on our children. These constant jokes eventually do get to people. We get to children who are very vulnerable. So we started a campaign. We decided that Manchester was a multicultural city. That there were many cultures. In fact, today there's 190 languages spoken in Manchester, including some Irish speakers. That it's time that we put Manchester, we put the Irish culture within that context, that mix of cultures in Manchester. So we started doing a few programmes. We started Irish studies in school. We introduced Irish history, Irish music. Uh, we told people that we were Irish even though we had English accents. But we had the culture, the background and the love of Ireland. And it was surprising just how many other people said the same thing. So in a city like Manchester, you can have the dark skin, you can have the Manchester Irish, the Manchester accent, but you can still be Irish. I've come down right into the heart of the city to find out a little bit more about the Irish people that would have set up home here over the past two centuries. This area today is known as Angel Meadow. It's a real upmarket city centre residential area with beautiful apartments right around us. But when the Irish came here, particularly around the time of the famine and in the subsequent years, this area was known as Irish Town. It's hard to believe, but the records show that in 1841, a tenth of Manchester's population were Irish, many living in very poor conditions. Unprepared for city life, many of the early Irish inhabitants found themselves living in terrible conditions. In the main, the Irish found jobs in construction as labourers and builders. Many worked on the construction of canals, of which Manchester has many, and became known as the Navigators. They also worked on the railway and road construction across the UK. 
despite the very, very tough times for many of the Irish immigrants, they never forgot their county, their country or their family, often sending a portion of their earnings back home each week. What's poignant and sad in many ways is that it's believed that many of those early Irish immigrants are buried in pauper's graves in this city park. presenting the programme from Manchester, we were on a building site and had to wear the boots and helmets and high-vis jackets, all of that. But thankfully, uh, the builders got on with it and have done a fantastic job for us. So it's now up and running phase one. The site that we're stood on, this 15 acres, is called Irish Town. And it's called after an area of the city in the 1800s that was known as Irish Town and sadly because of all the poverty and everything they all died away. There was 30,000 Irish there in the early 1800s and the whole site now that we're on is called Irish Town and the road in Irish Town Way. When you walk through the door you're walking on Kilkenny Granite. Uh, all the woodworks came fr were manufactured in Tullamore uh, again, Glenwood Brothers there did a fantastic job for us and the lighting came from Wicklow, all the copper came from Dublin, the stainless steel from Wexford, all the stonework and all the walls you see outside, there's 2,500 tonnes of Donegal stone, three different colours to match the timbers. The carpet, that came from Ulster carpets and you'll see from the design that it has different Irish images of Gaelic football or hurling, the hound or national emblem, the harp, the Irish dancers. The bar is designed in the shape of a hurling and again the architects uh, John Duffy in Dublin and his partner Ewan Byrne did a fantastic job and we weren't the easiest to please but they did it. Michael we can see the smile on your face it means so much to you. Well it does because there's so many people have inspired me over the years. Sadly a lot of them have passed on but their memories will never pass on and we'll ensure when this place is completely finished in another 12 to 18 months that their stories are going to be told. And not alone will their story be told but it's time we told the story of Irish contribution worldwide. I know it's been done in many many different countries but it's only small amounts of it we want to tell the whole story in the museum what we have achieved worldwide phase two will be built in conjunction with the hoteliers that's going to be working with us shortly on site and that'll have a big conference facility and we'll also have our own measuring stop which will be the first stop out of the city centre and it has a direct run to Oldham, Rochdale, Bury and the airport. This centre will embrace the whole community and all the different cultures. Uh, it will also have two business meeting rooms because we want to be a showcase for Irish 
companies, companies who want to come into the British market. We've already done the research and from where we're stood here, there's 33 million people within one and a half hours drive and they're all potential customers of Irish products and we want to showcase that for them. It's great to be able to say that Irish TV now are going to be our first client in there and we're delighted to be able to help Irish TV get, get a foothold in the northwest of England. There's many great television companies work out of the north of England and no one better than Irish TV. What you do for Irish people worldwide is brilliant and we will help in whatever possible way we can to ensure that you read out to a much greater audience. Well, my role is to run an annual programme of events um, and we work with Irish people and non-Irish people in Manchester and we um, do a lot of education workshops. We lot bring a lot of kids into the, from local schools into the centre and teach them about Irish culture and heritage. And we're just um, in the process of planning a series of Irish history talks. Um, they'll be take place every second, every second week for about three months. So we bring in special to talk about different subjects, different topics about Irish heritage and culture and we're planning as well to um, premiere a film um, called Terrible Beauty, which it will be the UK premiere of that film. So there's lots of different types of things that we work on. Um, like I said, we were involved in all the different um, festivals across the city, the Manchester Day Parade, the Cheatham Festival, which is a local festival, the obviously the Irish Festival, which is a big one for us. And then and on any given day I can get end up involved in any in all sorts of different projects that just fall on my lap and it's very exciting so no day is the same. Well if you come to Manchester uh, one of the men that you have to meet is uh, Michael Maher here, a Tipperary man. He's a legend here uh, in the Irish shop. Michael, uh, you're going a long time at it now at this stage. Tell us a little bit about the Irish shop. It's uh, fantastic. Uh, you get people coming from all over the, over the country. Uh, they come from their, their newspapers and uh, every different county. And if you haven't got the newspapers, <laughs> they're cold man, you know what I mean? And then they do shopping when they're here as well. Uh, lemonade and Sidon and biscuits and cakes for hairs, cakes and uh, flour and soup and of course we've got sausage and bacon and puddings and buttermilk, they, they bake the bread as well with the flour and uh, they, they all like coming in uh, for the paper every week, you know what I mean? The, the lots to do with the paper. And Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from in Tipperary, Michael. I'm from a small little village in Tipperary called Snorty Rasmoa. It's only a small little village, only a public church, a school, and a graveyard and a butcher shop in it. And there was three on the scene that came there a couple of years ago, De Declan Ryan, Joe Hayes, and uh, John Kennedy, and a very proud little village on the scene of the team. Oh, I, I come every I come every week for the paper for the for the to Kenny people and to see my family. Well, I, I'm, I come here every weekend actually, you know, Saturday and Sunday, and um, for us we for, for see the lads. You know what I mean? I'm delighted to be part of the club here, and the people here have done a brilliant job, and Michael Ford and Brent Kennedy and all the lads have done a brilliant job together, going like you know. And hopefully we'll have many more years in here, like we had in the old club. Isn't it great to see that camaraderie and community spirit uh, of the Irish community here right across Manchester? Now, if you'd like to contact us at any stage, you can email us at info at irishtv.ie. That's info at irishtv.ie. And we absolutely love to hear from our viewers at home and abroad. It means everything to us. And thank you so much uh, for your support over the past two years. And as you continue to develop, I hope you stay with us. Uh, so much more coming up in the programme. As well as that, of course, don't forget you can contact us on our social media sites on Facebook and on Twitter as well. We're updating them all the time and some great competitions there as well. We're going to take another short break. We'll be right back with loads more in a few minutes. Well, you're very welcome back to the programme, our special broadcast from the heart of Manchester. And I'm delighted to be joined by a very well-known man, Mickey Cohn, of course, made famous by Seamus Moore's song. Mickey, you're a native of Chum. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up here in Manchester. I left uh, Ireland in 49, with a tear in my eye, and I made my way to Manchester. And uh, I found some work, and I haven't looked back since. Now you've been known as the Cobble Fighter. How did you get that name? 
the couple, when I was young, the pavements were all cobbled. Nowadays, it's blacktop. So that's where you got the name, the cobbles. When they wanted me to scrap, they said on the cobbles. I boxed because I loved it. I done the cobbles because I loved it. I used to do the doors, and when I was young, there was the tether boys and the skinheads, and they used to make a lot of noise. And they used to, I had a reputation, and I had to defend the reputation. So, this is right on the cobbles. So I was out a couple of times a night. And they were all good, but I was better. <laughs> now you're from Tumor, near Tumor. I come from uh, Balladoon in, in Tumor. It's not far from my not my. I come from a farm, a family of 14. I was the seventh son. And would you have a cure then? Oh, it's, I think it's a KO job. <laughs> I, I haven't found it yet. And are you enjoying life here in Manchester? I have a great life. I've got a good family. I've got my own family, my grandkids. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've never looked back. I've had a good. I've been contracting for 40 years. I'm retired now. A lot of mileage. But a, a couple of rounds left yet. A couple of rounds left yet. Mickey Cohn, lovely talking to you. Thank you very much. I've been living here now since 1979. And these two dogs are my my life, really. You know, we, we show them, you know, they're, they're two rough collies. And, I walk them every day and I have me hardly stick with me to keep everybody in order, you know. <laughs> I was in London for about five years and then I came up to Levenzoom and I got married here in Levenzoom and I have one daughter and seems settled here now, you know what I mean? My home is home is Tipperary, you know what I mean? Like, I love Hotling, you know what I mean? That's, I, go to the, I go to the moon to watch Hotling. I like I find Manchester United a bit, but never come near Hotling, you know what I mean? In respect, like our next door neighbours, Kilkenny, you know, they're dominated at the moment, so which is a bit of a half take, but. Nevertheless, we'll keep talking on anyhow, you know. <laughs> well, I've actually been here 55 years. Uh, I, do, I was born 300 yards away, uh, and we won the Levin Gym Pub Company. Uh, we have three bars in Levin Gym, uh, and we have one in Burnage. Community life in Levin Gym is fantastic. You know, we all mix together. There's no kind of segregation bits in Levin Gym where right? you've got uh, Africans one area, you know, Irish another area, English another area. We all mix together and we all get on really well together, you know, which we have to. We've got loads of ethnic uh, minority groups in Levenshire and we all tend to try and work together. I know as well, Lawrence, you're hugely involved in the Irish Festival. How important is that to Manchester? Uh, well, it's fantastically important. Uh, we tend to have lots of events in the smaller venues. It's not only about having the scripts on at the big arena, you know, we're into smaller events. You know, we've got a local club uh, in St. Kensington's in Fallowfield, we've got the Chelsea Club, we've got the Irish World Heritage Centre, uh, we've got the Horseshoe Pub here in Levin uh, Fiddler's Green Pub in Levin June, Hennigan's Union, M19. We, su we all support each other. We own the Horseshoe, which is just behind you there, Piz. Um, we took over the Horseshoe Pub two years ago. Uh, the Horseshoe being a famous Mayo Baron. It is the official Mayo Baron Levin Zoom now. So, Lawrence Hennigan, if you're listening. Uh, basically, we took over the pub two years ago, and things are going from strength to strength, really. We're involved in uh, numerous events throughout Manchester with the Levin Festival, the Gathering Festival, um, the Irish Festival, which is coming, uh, the launch night coming up pretty soon. So things are looking, you know, things are looking up for us in a, in a, in a country that's in decline at the minute. So, you know, we have to just uh, get up every morning, open the doors and, and put on the special events every week with live music, etc. We have uh, food available, we have all the sports available. So it's not like it was years ago, Pierce, where you opened the door and they flooded through the doors. Now you have to get them in. Somehow we have, we're working it, we're doing well. Now, 2013, as we all know, is a very significant year for Irish tourism, and I'm delighted to be joined by Tony Hennigan, who has been instrumental in developing links between Manchester and Mayo. Tony, 2013, it is a big year uh, here in Manchester, and of course, those links you're developing with Mayo. Yeah, and indeed in County Levenson, where you are at present, uh, we've decided to do something to link Manchester and Mayo together, and we've come up with the idea of a Manchester Mayo gathering which will take place in North Mayo from the 1st to the 9th of August in Atimas, Ballinar, Swinford, Crossmalina, Bonniconlon and all the areas surrounding the areas of Ballinar. How important, Tony, is it to keep those links between Mayo and Manchester alive? It's very important, especially for the, uh, the gathering. 
to try and encourage people to go back to Mayo and other parts of Ireland for the gatherings that are taking place there. Mayo itself has 170 different gatherings taking place in County Mayo and we want everyone to make full use of them. I know you're a Nazi math native, it means a lot to you. It does indeed. My mother and father were born in the parish of Atimas and we're doing a massive nine day gathering in Atimas itself. We're launching it in the Father Painting Centre and Mary Robinson is doing a dinner with us on the, on the last day. So it's going to be a fantastic nine days. friends here, which it's nice to be here to meet them, We're supporting the old association in, in, in Manchester. It's a very good Irish community here. It's a pleasure to be here among my own people. We usually hold it every summer in Mayo, and I have wonderful memories as a child there. Picking cockles on the beach in Gisala, going to Dillock Beach. And it's wonderful that I'm able to bring my son Christopher back there and to let him see what I had as a child. Well, I've come to Manchester around 16 years of age. With very little bit pocket, and there wasn't much happening in Ireland in them days. And I worked hard ever since I've, I've got my own garage for the past 35 40 years, and I haven't done too bad. Well, I'm from Bellacoric in the Mayo, as you probably know. I'm married to Mary Coy, who was Jerry Coy's sister, Councillor Jerry Coy. And I'm, yeah, Henry's the godfather of the boxer. We, 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 we got into the oil business in 75. The ran had sold my shares in 88. And then uh, I continued in the contract and the left ever since. And we look after motorway maintenance nationally. And what's the work scene like in the UK at the moment? Well, it, it's rough in places, but the our business is actually thriving at the moment. There was a bit of neglect for a few years of motorway maintenance, and that's been tried to really regress now. It was so far gone, it's, it's, it'll never get caught up. So we're extremely busy, which I'm almost embarrassed to say. Some of my best friends are from County Mayo, and uh, even though we won the Sam this year, there's no hard feelings, so that's why I'm here tonight supporting the uh, Mayo Association. And I'm from Donegal, from Arranmore Island, and uh, my parents still live there, Margaret and only Catherine, that's so sad. Well, the party is certainly in full swing here at 
the Lancashire County Cricket Ground. It's going to go into the wee hours of the morning. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the programme and that you join us again next week. Every Thursday at 9 pm on Sky TV channel 191. And if you have missed anything, log on to our website irishtv.ie. Big thank you to the Mayo Manchester Association for inviting us along. And special thank you to our good friend Marcelo Wilkinson. It means a lot to us. And until next week, from everybody involved in the program, Slán Agus Banach. Well,